At the start of the pandemic, I spoke to Kishore Mabubani, the diplomat and author, to help us understand the unfamiliar shifts overwhelming the world. Since then, his new book, Has China Won?, has been released internationally about a country and a people he has come to know well. I'm James Chow for The China Current. Through this year, I've spoken to authors from Fatima Bhutto to Kishore Mabubani to discuss their writing and the formative experiences that shaped their viewpoint. When was the first time you visited China and what did China feel like in those years? Well, I first visited China, Beijing, in 1980, exactly 40 years ago. And when I arrived in Beijing, there were no skyscrapers. There were big highways, but no cars, only bicycles. And since I was staying in a guest house, not far from Tiananmen, uh, I would go jogging down the little lanes, the hutongs as they call them and people will be out on the muddy streets with little pails of water, brushing their teeth out in the main street. And it was like a rustic uh, rural uh, environment right in the heart of Beijing, right? So, and people there couldn't choose what to wear. They all wore Maoist suits. The ladies didn't have colorful dresses. So it was in many ways the exact opposite of what you see in Beijing today. So I have actually personally seen and experienced this dramatic transformation of China. That's why I can speak with great confidence of how far China has come in transforming its society. Could you have possibly foreseen in 1980 that in 2020, we will be speaking about China as a global economic force or that you would even be writing a book about China in 2020? Uh, absolutely not. I mean, there was uh, China was still so far behind uh, the rest of the world, I mean, in economic terms. And uh, no one could have dreamt. So that's amazing. That, that's one of the most amazing transformations in world history. And I think we still don't understand how it happened so fast, why it happened so fast. I think future historians will be able to see it, but all we all we, that we can see and experience it, but we cannot understand it in a way that future historians can understand. If you were to speak to your American friends or even to your Singaporean friends, and they say, what are the Chinese people like? I joined the uh, Singapore Foreign Service in 1971. That's now like 49 years ago. And I used to interact with Chinese diplomats. And I, I must say, I tried to avoid Chinese diplomats in the 70s because they would carry Mao's little red book in their pocket and often recite to you slogans that they were taught to recite to you. And you couldn't have a polished, sophisticated conversation on the state of the world. You only got slogans. Now you fast forward 49 years. Today, if you give me a choice, do I want to talk to an American diplomat or a Chinese diplomat? I would just as happily speak to a Chinese diplomat because he'd probably speak more languages than the American diplomat. He would know the history of a country better than the American diplomat. And he'd be able to give you a very subtle, sophisticated understanding uh, of a country. So the, you can see how China, even just in its diplomacy, has changed dramatically in the last 49 years. I am James Chow. You're watching The China Current. Follow us on social media at The China Current.